Listen up, soldiers. The enemy have secured the ground floor of the Daesong Data Center. If they manage to get their hands on the package, then all of this was for nothing. I'm gonna need you and your squads to hold strong for another five minutes. I know. Just give me that window so we can at least extract what we can and destroy the rest. Do me that solid and I'll do my goddamn best to get as many of you home as possible. Please, just make sure they just don't get on that roof. I repeat, make sure the enemy does not get on that roof. The fate of the world depends on it. Best of luck. Hi there, I'm Minel. Welcome to my gamification channel. Before we begin, if you like what you've seen so far and you're interested in checking out more gaming content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Now, Battlefield 2042. I'm going to approach this review a little differently than usual. I've been a long time fan of Battlefield since the bad company games on Xbox. I've experienced many of the ups and downs this series has faced, from the numerous launch time worlds to the soaring highs of Battlefield 3. So, I'm gonna cater this review for those new to the series and the fringe adjacent who merely dip their toes into the franchise. Quick backstory, Battlefield has faced a little bit of an identity crisis for many years now. This series used to be the go-to option for those that preferred a more military, tactical, team-based game over the fast-paced Twitch shooters that many of the competition provides. The term Battlefield Moment was coined because of the sandbox type crazy action that could happen at any moment, from rendezvous to buildings dropping on your head. I an enemy the building dropped on my face! Battlefield as a franchise has harbored and spawned off a dedicated community of players, fans, and content creators that has entertained gamers on both PC and console for decades. In recent times though, this series has leaned more on trying to keep pace with the zeitgeist than it has been on spreading its own wings in recent years. Jumping on trends like battle royale and loot boxes in the form of battle packs, all the while legacy features that many fans came to expect from the franchise became increasingly absent with each iteration. Battlefield 2042 promises to be a return to form, jumping forward in time once again, picking up where Battlefield 4 left off with a much more focused multiplayer outing. Ditching the single player campaign entirely, the loot boxes and battle royale are gone to now offer three main game modes. All Out War, Hazard Zone, and Battlefield Portal. With that being said, this review is going to be split into those three sections to hopefully provide a clear context of what to expect going into Battlefield 2042. This is going to be a big review. So, let's get ready. Is this the triumphant return for DICE? Well, let's find out.
little transparency off the top, EA provided me a copy of this game to review, but they did not have any say in regards to the content of this video. They're watching this at the same time as you. I played Battlefield 2042 on the Xbox Series X, so my review will reflect that experience, and thus I cannot comment on the conditions of the other platforms. What I will say is that this is my experience of the game from early access to now. I put in over 30 hours of gameplay, so if you're curious about the performances on other platforms, you may want to check out some other reviews. Battlefield 2042 is around the 12th entry in the series and ups the player count for current gen consoles and PCs from 64 to 128 player crossplay enabled lobbies. The game runs at 60 FPS at 4K, although from time to time, especially when the action is getting a bit frantic, that number can dip down. Along for the ride are seven brand new maps that will have you globe trotting around the world, from the searing heat of renewal in Egypt to the blistering cold of Breakaway set in Antarctica. Visually, the new maps are absolutely gorgeous. However, I would have liked a few more urban, more lived in environments like we saw in Battlefield 3. Gone are the rustic markets or the chaotic moments that used to take place in Metro. These brand new environments just feel a little bit too clean for a battlefield that takes place in 2042. I adore Discarded and Renewal, with plenty of areas for little compartmentalized battles to occur, but both also showcase large wide open areas for large scale carnage to take place. None of the maps I feel is as memorable as the battlefield maps of old, which I'll get into a little later in the review. Existing Conquest and Breakthrough gameplay modes return to comprise all-out warfare, with Conquest being the series staple, dropping two teams down on the ground to capture and hold onto various sectors in the hopes of depleting the enemy's reinforcements. Breakthrough is a more focused affair and splits the team into attackers and defenders. The aggressors must break down the enemy lines to complete their objectives, whilst the defenders must hold off the opposing forces until their tickets run dry. 2042 is an almost spiritual continuation to where things were left with Battlefield 4 back in 2013, even bringing back the character of Irish performed by the late great Michael K. Williams. Joining Irish are nine other specialists replacing the character classes of previous entries. The introduction of specialists has been controversial to say the least. The community has been torn as this is probably the biggest shakeup the series has seen since its inception. Each of the 10 specialists bring their unique gadgets and passive abilities to the front lines in the hopes of allowing squads to make meaningful contributions to the enormous combat zones. A similar system to what we see in other team-based shooters like Overwatch, which replaces the traditional classes from previous games. For instance, Sundance, the French operative, is equipped with a wingsuit that allows them to dive off buildings and fly through the skies over unsuspecting enemy troops. This allows for some really cool flanking opportunities, as well as being able to traverse the environment in a fun, cool way. Angel, the Romanian naval trooper, can revive downed allies, replenish ammo and call in care packages to allow teammates to change loadouts on the fly. These specialists can equip any of the 22 included guns, sidearms and gadgets they like, foregoing the previous title's meta. Quickly identifying your team's specializations in the thick of battle can be the difference between a win or a massive defeat, and is why games like Overwatch work well with this particular model. But in 2042, it's no longer communicable in-game via the visual design to know whether your team or squad possesses enough medics, for example, as anyone can carry a medpack now. You just won't be able to tell at a glance who that might be. Personally, I enjoy the freedom that these specialists provide, allowing you to be the soldier that you want. I found a few that I like to rotate through and I have a mixture of loadouts to complement the different situations that may crop up. But not all specialists are balanced in their abilities, particularly on specific maps. And quickly, you'll see the field full of soldiers all identical in appearance. This choice comes at the cost of the team and squad cohesion, at a glance, you can no longer know what your team requires at any given moment, as the so-called engineer could be carrying a sniper rifle with spotting grenades instead of a repair tool needed to fix your tank on the brink of exploding. In fact, I've yet to have anyone repair any of the vehicles I've been traveling in compared to previous titles, as the other gadgets are less situational and have more versatility to them. That fine balance of knowing which class to play at which given moment is just gone here. 
Also, with the lack of voice chat at launch, the specialist system leans heavily into players playing however they individually want, rather than what is best for the team's good. On top of that, the specialists tonally seem to break the immersion this gritty proxy war setting DICE sets out to achieve. The roster's diversity is fantastic though, with a wide worldly selection to choose from, with the promise of more on the way, and hopefully they can help fill in the holes and provide new gameplay opportunities to help cement the teams together. Still, their appearance seem almost cartoonish to me, especially with their end of play dialogue. Yeah, Angel does it again. You to keep up. Sometimes they just line up for you. 2042's other main selling feature is the expanded full scale environmental events that could happen at random. These events are supposed to disrupt gameplay with tornadoes and sandstorms, enabling the craftier squads to utilize the carnage to their advantage. Upon watching the initial reveal trailer, many fans thought that a helicopter wrecking havoc on ground troops would now have to struggle for control and visibility in the skies as the heavens opened up in real-time weather events. In reality, these events are impressive spectacles to witness but do very little to affect the actual gameplay. Sandstorms limit visibility a tad and the tornadoes move way too slow to become any sort of hindrance to anyone on the battlefield. I think many were hoping that entire buildings would be ripped from their foundations and the environment would be transformed, creating a whole new war ground in the aftermath. But they are in no way game-changing like the behemoths were in Battlefield 1 or the Levolution introduced in Battlefield 4. This is a huge shame because after the first few times of seeing them, after that, everyone just tends to ignore them. With the introduction of 128 players in All Out Warfare, I expected battles large and small throughout the maps, but players seem to cluster at the main points and very few smaller skirmishes are going on outside of that. Perhaps if there were smaller level changing objectives that squads could fight for in between that could help spread the chaos around. Maybe taking over a particular power station that isn't an objective sector could allow one team to kill the lights in an enemy controlled territory for instance or taking over a satellite array could mark the positions of enemy vehicles on the map for a limited time. At present, seeing 128 players duke it out is incredible to see in the footage, but does very little to make you feel like you are individually affecting the tide of battle, like in previous Battlefield titles. Hopefully with future Promise maps, we'll see the map design consider the player count and look to spread this chaos around. But for now, it looks like Battlefield Hazard Zone is where DICE is focusing its tactical play. Battlefield's Hazard Zone is the newest game mode to join the fray, which takes you and your squad of three other teammates to retrieve data drives that are scattered across the map. The data is so vital that the opposing squadrons of real players have been assigned with the same mission to seek, retrieve and extract the data by any means necessary. Once you retrieve the data, two limited time extraction points pop up at random locations on the map meaning only two squads can make it out of the game with hard drives intact, or potentially none at all. This is Battlefield's take on a tent squad base mode, limiting the player numbers down to 32. This high stakes survival game mode ramps things up even more when you realize you only have one life to achieve your mission. 
tensions will run high as each member will have to watch their sectors for enemy movement. If killed, you'll have to spectate your team for the rest of the match. Teammates can revive you if they find one of the game mode's reinforcement uplinks or purchase one before the round begins. So, why are these drives so critical? What kind of information is contained within? Why, it's Dark Matter Credits, of course, this game's in-game currency. Squads can use credits to kit out their specialists with various perks and equipment to aid in subsequent hazard runs. Successful extractions can increase your extraction streak, enabling discounts and other benefits, and we all love a good bargain. Failure or death on a mission can reset this streak to zero, so team communication and coordination are vital to succeeding in this mode. There is definitely a different vibe when playing Hazard Zone, with a significantly reduced player count of 32. Each squad can only choose one of each specialist type, meaning teams have to work together to ensure abilities are used wisely and complementary. Once you acquire a drive, you're vulnerable to all other squads as they can scan the drives on your person. This is probably the tensest I've ever felt playing Battlefield and can lead to some really crazy moments. I'm trying to put down the torrents still. Guys, all the planet shut up. Oh, <laughs> it's not quite the battle royale they introduced in Battlefield 5, and nor does it compete with the multiple systems at play with games like Hunt Showdown. Nevertheless, it's a nice distraction from the chaos of all that warfare, offering a quiet, sneaky, stealthy affair to the Battlefield landscape. Personally, I would like to have seen this mode adopt a few more features to make it stand out. Unique maps that were explicitly catered for this gameplay mode, maybe some indoor close quarters affairs. Capturing enemy units to extract information and possibly valuables from them, rather than just killing them outright. Maybe even more unique abilities for the specialists for this mode. For example, Powell could hack data drives to disable their signals with his ARM processor. All in all, a decent mode, and a fun distraction from the main game's offerings, but I don't think it has the longevity like previous modes of Battlefield for anything more profound. Hazard Zone could have definitely benefited from unique unlocks that you could utilize in other modes. I guess Hazard Zone lacks that customizability that Battlefield's final mode possesses. Battlefield Portal, this is where the game really, really shines. Without a doubt in my mind, Portal is the best mode in 2042. On top of the seven new maps, six classic maps from Battlefield of Old make a comeback. From Battlefield 1942, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 3, yes, that's right, the busy port town of Eureka Harbor is back in its new Frostbite engine coat of paint. Now with its heightened player count and ability to be customized in the brand new BF Portal mode. Previous Battlefield entries on PC and console allowed for custom servers where server hosts could modify a limited number of options to house the rules they saw fit. Battlefield Portal brings a whole new level of customizability to the series, allowing players to host their own wartime fantasies with features and options from previous entries in the series. Modes such as Team Deathmatch and Rush from Bad Company are accessible here also, allowing those who harken back to nostalgic times to revisit that lust for mid-2000s carnage. Using a desktop browser, Portal empowers you to tweak even the most minute details such as weapon attachments, character gadgets and damage outputs, allowing you to manipulate the game logic to craft the perfect mode. Once constructed, these Portal playlists can then be shared via experience codes to anyone to experience. Finding a particular vehicle OP? Well, you can turn that off and never see it in your matchups again. Want to recreate a Rambo-esque scene where it's 100 players with knives versus one man and a minigun? Or how about a team deathmatch where you're only armed with knives and defibrillators? Until 343 releases Halo's Forge mode for Halo Infinite, 
Battlefield Portal currently stands as the only contemporary first-person shooter that allows for this level of modification for its players included in the base game. Let's hope DICE don't drop the ball here as they have something that not only leans on the nostalgia of the loyal fans, but can hopefully spawn off brand new creative modes that could become the new meta within first-person team-based games. This is where I've had the most fun in my playthrough. Playing maps I've spent hundreds of hours on in the past brings me right back to how I remembered them. Building destruction is back here with entire buildings being leveled on top of your head if they take too much tank fire. Now I can experience these maps with guns, vehicles and abilities that weren't initially possible all those years ago. The introduction to Portal to the series gives long-term players hope that DICE will add to this roster with perhaps more remade maps from Battlefield 4, 1 or even 2142. In an age where microtransactions are rife within the AAA gaming environment, it's almost unexpected to see a mode like this within a massively multiplayer team shooter. You'd almost expect this level of customizability to be behind a paywall, as previously just hosting your own servers would cost money in past entries. Strangely, the inclusion of Portal makes the 2042 package feel a lot less cohesive. Features and elements present in Battlefield Portal make you question why they're absent in 2042's other modes. Easier spotting, building destruction, server browsing, player cap limits, the return of classes and how well they work when playing as a team. Strangely, Portal is held back by the hindrances that come from 2042's backend. The lack of a global scoreboard, squad leader orders, voice chat, bigger squads, the long lost battle log and squad spawn cameras to name a few. The ping system frustrates me the most as it's a sign that things just haven't developed as far as they should. Games like Apex, EA's other FPS title are leaps and bounds above what 2042 offers here in terms of communication. On console, it's just too cumbersome to use. It's a massive disappointment as the game is set in 2042. It's just not contextual or intuitive in the way it needs to be in such a chaotic game. If you're losing Bravo, for instance, and you need the squad to quickly change tact, a breadcrumb system of sorts pointing the player in the direction of the squad leader's orders would be an excellent option, especially when guiding new players on how to play the game. A good leader in previous titles could coordinate the squad to change the tide of battle through the constant use of squad orders to guide players new and experienced, and they'd be rewarded for it. Speaking of new players, how friendly is this game for them? After the opening cinematic, Battlefield 2042 chucks you into a short match full of AI bots and just says, go at it. If you've never experienced a Battlefield game before, this tutorial lacks the nuance needed to understand the meta this series is best known for. Team play is what sets this series apart, and this opening glimpse of what Battlefield 2042 has to offer lacks the attention to detail a series multiple games deep should possess. Especially considering this entry is without a single player campaign, of which previous games used to significant effect to tutorialize the player. This multiplayer only offering requires team play tactic tutorials, support situation drills, individual specialist ability scenarios and more to onboard new players. Most elements that separate it from its contemporaries are left for players to discover for themselves or simply just given in tooltips. Speaking with new players, they're constantly annoyed about running for ages, dying and having to run for long periods again. The lack of squad spawning information and its benefits are left out there Battlefield 4 used a spawn camera to allow you to see how your squad were faring from the air. With so many players in Battlefield 2042, you need to be able to zoom in on the map to ensure you're spawning where you're required at the right time. This game screams for a shooting range or an area to test out unlocked weapons and gadgets in a safe space with your squad, akin to Back for Blood released this year. The idea of being non-patriots, mercenaries without a nation on board a military vessel, fighting a series of proxy wars to ensure innocent people can survive, and critical data can stay out the hands of greedy corporations, that's a great premise for a video game. The ship on the title screen used to house all of these non-pats could be an excellent hub area housing lore, easter eggs and tutorials for people who need to brush up on their skills. 
possibly maybe a VR area, allowing you to test drive or fly various vehicles in the game, instead of having to learn on the job, as is the situation currently. The UI feels as if it's half there, and I feel like the hub area would do well to keep the atmosphere DICE is trying to create and tie everything together. It's a real shame, as Battlefield 2042 is an excellent game at its core. With continued support, this game could last for many, many years. With Warzone and Halo Infinite being free to play, Battlefield 2042 is a hefty price to entice new players and does little to keep players returning for one more game. New players won't necessarily lament the missing features, but it's clear from fan outcry that this entry is significantly stripped back from previous titles. Whether that's a result of the pandemic or internal pressures to release the game to counter the competitor's dominance, who knows? But what I do know is when I check my friends list, I just know I'm just one of the few people playing it on a regular. People have left after the first initial weeks and haven't returned. It's a shame as these features will inevitably make a returning game one day, but by then it may be too late. The state in which this Battlefield game has launched is familiar territory for fans of the series. I can personally remember the launches of Battlefield 3 and 4 and how it took many weeks and months to get those games running without the myriad of launch worlds and broken guns. 2020 was an incredibly tough year for everyone and I'm almost hesitant to go too hard on a game produced by people from their homes. But in the same breath, with so much free competition out there from other team-based shooters, EA and DICE simply can't afford to patch the quirks after the fact, as many players will not give them the breathing space required. I know I've vented a few frustrations here in this review, but honestly, I'm hopeful for the future of the series. This entry has reinvigorated my love for Battlefield and the possibility that many previous Battlefield maps could be remastered for the portal mode, as well as brand new 2042 features and expansions still to come, this game is still staying on my hard drive. The missing features and launch worlds haven't spoilt the fun that I've been having with my friends. The passion in my annoyance at the current state of Battlefield comes as I can see the basis of an incredible game underneath it. I'm confident that DICE can deliver a fantastic multiplayer team shooter, just maybe, maybe not in 2021. I've been Inel, and thank you very much for watching this very long review. If you've made it all the way to the end, then let me know in the comments below. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the Gamification channel, where I'll do my best to bring you more reviews like this in the future. Also, if you've picked up Battlefield 2042 or you're on the fence about the title, let me know your thoughts. I'd be interested to find out what you think. Ooh, also, you can catch me on Twitch three days a week where I stream various games, including Battlefield. Until next time, thank you for watching.